All right, we've got our next few layers going of our paper quilling. It probably looks something amazing like that. Oh, oh man, now I've got to do it again. That's okay. Actually, I didn't do that right today because they're not glued down. So I've got my first few rows here ready to go. You should have at least four at this point. If not, you'll probably want to get there before we do the next steps. Although all these steps are pretty similar. So I do have all of my next two rows ready to go. I've got eight of the hearts. I've got eight of the S scrolls. So I am going to start getting my glue on my paper ready to go. Do, do, do. And I can add more if I need to as well, but I just want to make sure I've got a decent amount here to help hold everything in place. That looks pretty good. That looks actually kind of cool, doesn't it? Okay, important things to remember as we're placing these. We do not want to go like this. Well, let's see. <laughs> I'll go like this, and then maybe I'd place one here and here and just start going all the way around like that. Mm-mm-mm. That's not what we want to do because we're looking for radial symmetry. Let me tell you a little story that has happened to one or more students before. If you do this where you go kind of like this and then you just keep going around like so, um, usually you don't add, uh, end up with it looking quite uh, symmetrical with the radial symmetry that we're looking for. Another thing that can happen too, we only have so much of each color of paper, right? So especially as you get to these outer rows where you might be using more of each shape, you could potentially run out of paper if you're doing it this way. Because imagine that I had all these red hearts, right? And all of a sudden I get here, and now I've run out of my red paper, and I've got this big gap still left to go. Womp womp. That's not good. Um, because now I don't have that color anymore. I'm going to have to switch it, or I'm going to have, you know, a big blank space. So that's not great. Neither of those are great options, which is why whenever we're placing these, you always want to make sure that you're going for the one across. So this is across from there. Now, instead of going right next to it, I'm going to start going in the other direction, right? For the radial symmetry this way. Excellent. Now I'm going to probably want to get some there and there, but I always want to fill it in across from from the last one because that way get this in there there we go that way let's say I've got my eight and I run out where I see that oh I only have you know two more left it still is filled in now yeah there's spaces in between but that's okay because we can use a different color, a different row to fill in those gaps. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my S scroll, as you probably noticed before, um, and that's going to fill in these spaces. Now I am going to have to, because the S scroll is a little bit taller, so I'm just going to get up a little extra glue up here in between all of them so that the top gets stuck down too. La -la -la -la. Just like that. And I'm going to want to make sure as I'm placing these that they're all going the same direction. I wouldn't want some going like this way and then some going this way. That wouldn't look great. So, doo -doo -doo. yep, so I'm going to make sure this one's going in the same direction. If I were to turn it around, it would be the same direction that that one's going in. All right, so then this one would go here. This is where if you've got like a tweezers, sometimes that can come in handy as you're placing these. There we go. And let's see, four more to go. Once again, kind of working with that radial symmetry, so I want to make sure that I'm always working across from the last one that I did. Let's see, and you can always do... Um, if you're not sure, you know, you can always do like I did at the beginning of the video. Maybe you thought that was real. I didn't mean to actually drop them. I, I did, right? Like I did a dry placement first to see how it would look before I committed to it with the glue here. And you can do the same with yours. I know it does take a little extra time, but it's like checking your answers in math, right? It's going to make sure you're doing it right. 
So here we go. I've got my rows five and six completed. That's what we need to do for today. I am going to set my, whoopsies, everything okay? Yeah, I think so. Set my magazine on top of it. Could be a book too, just nothing too heavy. We don't want to like squish it. So just something to help keep your uh, scrolls and coils stuck to that glue while it dries. And um, have fun with this, okay? Have, make it look great. If you want to do more than just the two rows for today, definitely feel free to do so. Um, you can always start working ahead if you're thinking you're going to either, well, if you're working on the big one, the 12 by 12 instead of the 8 by 8 like I have, or if you're thinking you want to do both of them and you want to have that second one for extra credit. Um, if you're only doing the smaller, the 8 by 8 and you're only planning on doing one, I wouldn't really work ahead because otherwise you're going to end up being a little bored towards the end of the project. So um, have fun. Can't wait to see how these are coming along. We'll see you next time.